Hi, this is Mark Daly and I'm with Dovetail Genomics. And today I'm gonna to give you a brief 10 minute overview of our de novo assembly workflow. Uh, Dovetail, we've been building genome assemblies now since 2013. And we've built over 2000 genome assemblies, delivered them to hundreds of different customers across hundreds of different taxa. And what I'm gonna to present to you today um, will give, give you a, a summary, if you will, of, of um, how we approach genome assembly. So just so that everyone's on the same page, in case um, there are folks out there that are not familiar with genome scaffolding specifically, um, this is a technology called proximity ligation. You might otherwise know it as Hi-C or related technologies. And um, this is our core proprietary technology um, that we've been using for um, ever since we started. And basically, in, in a nutshell, proximity ligation is a way to um, build chromosome size scaffolds in a genome assembly. It's a way to link very distant parts of the genome together that is really impossible with any other technology. <clears throat> so here we see in this little cartoon, we see a picture of a chromosome and it's, this is actually an unfolding chromosome, but in reality, um, high C takes place with intact chromosomes inside the nucleus. But what we do is we fix the chromosomes and then we chop them up with an enzyme. In our case, we use uh, DNAs1. And after cutting up the chromosome, we then add a ligase reaction or mixture, which then um, allows all the random ends of the chromosome to uh, rejoin and connect. And um, when those connections occur, um, you're, you're going to have a, a much greater likelihood of connections that are close together in three-dimensional space, like these ones here. And you're gonna have far fewer connections that are more distant to one another. Um, and what happens is if you then take um, the left and right, for example, in this case, the left um, region of the genome and the right region of the genome from this ligation event, and you sequence across that junction, and you do this across the entire chromosome, you'll get a distribution of proximity ligation events from those that are very close together in the genome, like these ones up here, um, to connections that are more and more distant from one another until you actually get to the end of the chromosome. So what we're seeing here in this graph is the linear separation um, or linear distance along the chromosome and the vertical axis represents probability. So we get a lot of close interactions and fewer and fewer long range reactions. But essentially we're developing a library of the entire chromosome here. And this data can then be used to um, build um, a single scaffold for each chromosome. This is the history of Dovetail, just showing you the different versions of proximity ligation that we've released over the years. We started in 2013 with what we called Chicago this is an in vitro version of proximity ligation. And we use our software called HiRISE to do the actual scaffolding of the genome assembly. Then in 2015, we released our Dovetail Hi-C, which is an in vivo or in situ actually method of um, Hi-C. In 2019, we launched our OmniC technology, which is the newest version of a proximity ligation that we offer. Um, OmniC uses a DNAs1 enzyme as opposed to Hi-C in Chicago that used a restriction enzyme. And I'll describe why that's really important in a second. And looking at uh, this year and beyond, um, we're now able to phase um, full genome assemblies from end to end, from telomere to telomere uh, using OmniC um, um, as a scaffolding method. <clears throat> and we've done this in quite a few different genomes. And we've also done true diploid assembly of both human and tuna. And um, there's a paper that is um, uh, coming out soon on how this assembly was actually done. This was a collaboration between Dovetail and Stanford. The basic pipeline that we um, offer to our customers is uh, pretty straightforward. It starts by building a very high quality um, skeleton assembly, if you will, or draft assembly using deep pack biosequencing and uh, WTDBG2 or red bean as the assembly algorithm. 
We then scaffold that assembly using OmniC and our software high-rise. That essentially builds you a contiguity up to chromosome scale. <clears throat> we also offer an annotation service that includes both RNA-seq um, to develop the um, transcriptomes that we use to annotate the genome. And we also provide the full bioinformatics for the annotation um, as well. So at the end, you'll get a genome that is um, not only um, very high quality, very high accuracy, very contiguous, um, and you'll be able to publish that assembly with confidence. There are four main challenges in genome assembly shown on the left, um, but all of these challenges can be overcome. And the, I think the, the, the biggest strength Dovetail Genomics has is our experience. <clears throat> As you can see on the tree of life on the right, this is a tree of life depicting just a fraction of the genomes we've assembled over the years. Um, but many, many taxa are represented here. And um, it's this experience with dealing with the nuances of different organisms' genomes, both the sample, um, certain sample types are very, or certain organisms um, are very um, challenging in terms of DNA extraction. And we've dealt with those challenges and we know how to approach them. And also on the bioinformatics side, um, certain genomes have different attributes that it really helps if you've worked with a genome that's similar to that when we come to your project. So the top cartoon depicts the uh, molecular biology involved in OmniC. So again, we have a chromosome here that we're um, fixing with formalin. Um, we cross-link all the proteins together. We digest with DNAs one and then allow the chromosome to ligate back together. And we're gonna get a distribution of proximity events from very close together to very far apart. We then reverse cross-links and sequence that library and put that data along with your draft genome assembly into our high-rise scaffolding software pipeline. And I like the, um, th these two, uh, I like depicting this with, um, with actual raw data from the height from our OmniC. Um, so here you can see um, a contact plot from um, an assembly that before it goes into the high rise pipeline. And along the diagonal, you can see thousands of little squares. Each one of those squares is a separate scaffold. This assembly would not be very useful because it, the contiguity is far too low. After we um, scaffold this genome assembly using OmniC, we get the result on the right, which shows you far fewer squares. Um, each one of these purple squares is a chromosome, and you can see that all the chromosomes are very nicely separated. There is basically no background noise, and if you were to count up the number of chromo squares here, you'd get the chromosome number for this organism. Finally, um, just to show you the power of OmniC and why it's so important to use um, a sequence independent endonuclease like DNAs1. Um, the other competitive um, proximity ligation technologies that are on the market utilize either a single enzyme, a single restriction enzyme high C protocol shown on the top left, or a multi restriction enzyme protocol shown here in the middle. What I'm showing you here is sequence coverage plots. Um, so the x-axis represents the depth of sequencing and the y-axis represents the number of bases represented at that particular level of coverage. And the ideal plot you should get is shown with the dotted line. This would represent what you would typically get from a shotgun library. And what it means is you get very even coverage of the entire genome at, the, at roughly the same level of coverage. The problem with single en enzyme high c is that because you're using a restriction enzyme, you get bias. So you get some of the genome that's not represented at all, as shown here on the left. Um, you get very low coverage of some parts of the genome because there's very few restriction sites in th those parts of the genome, or you actually get over coverage where you're actually getting um, more coverage than is really necessary. And so what that means is it, it, looking at the raw sequence data here, you get lots of peaks and valleys. Um, 
even if you use a cocktail of different restriction enzymes, you still don't approach the shotgun-like level of coverage or curve. It's only when you switch to um, a sequence independent endonuclease like DNAs1 that has no biases across the genome that you get um, a coverage plot that very closely resembles a shotgun plot as shown in the bottom left corner. And again, if we look at the pileup of reads, we see um, basically no peaks and valleys. Um, all of the SNPs that are in this region of the genome, which are shown by colored lines are represented. And indeed, if you looked at the entire genome, um, you'll get a far greater um, SNP call rate using OmniC than if you used restriction enzyme-based HI-C. Why is that important? Because if you want to phase a genome using uh, OmniC technology, um, it's critical that as many SNPs are represented in the genome as possible and that they're accurately called. And OmniC provides the highest and most accurate call rate, SNP call rate, which um, means that OmniC data can be used to phase um, a, a genome. Um, instead of providing a haploid assembly, you can actually provide a phased assembly. You can even go beyond that and build um, true diploid assemblies using OmniC technology. So we believe that um, the benefits of OmniC are great and um, you will um, be able to explore some of these other um, applications of proximity ligation, um, like structural variation detection, SNP calling, um, of course, genome assembly, haplotype phasing, and chromatin confirmation profiling, um, like looking for TADs and looping domains. So with that, I'm gonna conclude my talk. Um, if you would like any further information, um, you can go to our booth uh, and, um, and we'll be present for the SFAF meeting, or you can email me directly at mark at dovetail-genomics.com. Thanks.